Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about a couple of sidearms um, and secondaries that you may want to use in your nerf battles. We are going to compare the Zinc to the all popular Dark Zone Mark II, and we also have other secondaries that I like, such as the Pigeon. You may have other sidearms um, that you use, but these are the ones that I found to be most popular, at least to this day. We also have options like the Snake and the Viper and other ones like that, but they all kind of work similarly to the Pigeon, so I'm going to group those together, meaning, you know, semi-automatic flywheeler versus your Dark Zone Mark II versus your Zinc. So we're going to be looking at secondaries and sidearms, so let's get into it. First thing we're talking about in a secondary is reliability. With any blaster, you want it to work when you go to fire. And so the options that we have here, um, we'll talk about the Dark Zone Mark II. Um, it's very reliable because it is a Springer, which are always good, and it's made from a repairable company, injection molded, so the parts are less likely to break on you. The only problem with it is if you go to top load and your darts are not centered in there, then you can have some problems with that. If you use a Chronos, you know what I'm talking about. Top load internal magazines are sometimes a little bit more finicky. Um, other than that, though, the Dart Zone Mark II is pretty reliable. We have blasters such as the Pigeon, the Mark VIII, the Snake, the Viper, the Twig Snake, the Snake V2, um, and the Woozy. I'm going to lump all those together because they all use a flywheel system, and flywheelers are typically known to be less reliable than springers because you have more parts, more moving parts, you have a pusher, you have the wheels that have to spin, you have your motors that can overheat, you have a battery that has to be charged, and because you have more parts to it, the Mark A and other similar flywheel blasters are a little bit less reliable. That is kind of where flywheel blasters in general, especially the Mark A, kind of don't quite match up. We have blasters such as the Rainbow, which is a pretty simple blaster. It's a springer, so it functions very simply. However, even your loading mechanism and your darts, you can lose some reliability depending on how it is you're loading your darts with a lot of, basically any blaster, if your, your feed isn't reliable, then your blaster is not reliable. The blaster itself though is pretty robust, it's pretty simple and it's hardware, so springers are definitely more reliable in general than flywheelers. The rainbow pistol itself, your loading mechanism is going to be your weak spot on that one. So as far as reliability goes, the rainbow probably ranks Above a flywheeler for me because it's simpler, but maybe below something that's got a more reliable loading mechanism. But again, there are ways you could get around that, but we'll talk about that later. And then lastly, here in the light up, we have the zinc. Reliability, as far as the zinc is concerned, it is pretty reliable. There are a couple of parts that could fail, such as if you don't prime it all the way forward, it's a little bit more difficult to use for, for children or younger kids, for example. However, the function is pretty simple with the Pull the prime, push to load, just like the Mark II. A very simple mechanism for people to understand. Um, and as far as parts that could break or fail, it is 3D printed, but I've dry fired my own personal zinc at least a hundred or several hundred times without any failures yet. I'd say it's pretty dang reliable. The only thing that could maybe go wrong is if you are not used to where the mag release is and hit it with the finger by accident. But once you get used to it, I don't think I've had any zincs fail on me. Get a jam dart. I mean, jam darts can happen on any platform. It's pretty easy to unjam because it is a Springer. As far as reliability goes, secondary for a Springer is definitely where you're going to win. The other thing in a secondary that might be useful depends on how you use it and your play style. So if you like to um, use your secondary as a, a last resort to rush an enemy or you have your high powered springer and you switch to your secondary to get off a high rate of fire of shots, that could be something to consider. And so a flywheel system definitely has more rate of fire than a springer. So the Pigeon and similar platforms are semi-automatic, meaning you can fire as fast as you can pull the trigger and as fast as your magazine can load. Other options for secondary might be the FBL Basic or the Woozy, which have a you know, higher rate of fire, um, which is good to spray the field with darts. So if you want rate of fire in your secondary, a flywheeler is definitely where you want to go, either semi-automatic or fully automatic, or a burst if you're that lucky. With blasters such as the Rainbow, you have a much slower rate of fire. Rainbow is more for accuracy, and so mo most spring secondaries will have the trade rate of fire for 
your accuracy or your power. And so the Mark II, as far as rate of fire is concerned, you can fire it as fast as you can pull and find a trigger. Uh, so you're a little limited, and plus your dart count, you've got seven darts instead of maybe a 15 round magazine. Um, but that's usually enough for a secondary. So the rate of fire of Springer is how fast you can pry and blow and pull the trigger. That to be said though, the zinc has a slam fire feature, which you may be familiar with, where you can fire darts as fast as you can pull the slide back and pull it forward. You don't even have to pull the trigger in between each shot. Again, you trade accuracy for rate of fire, but if you have an opponent who's relatively close and you have seven shots to hit them and they're close enough, you're probably gonna hit them. So with rate of fire, flywheeler is, is better. Spring power blasters, a little more limited rate of fire, but depending on how you'd like to use your secondary, that is something to consider. I prefer a little bit less rate of fire, but a little more accuracy and power, because if my blaster jams and their blaster jams, we have to pull out our secondary, if I can shoot further than them, then maybe I can hit them before they even get to me. Um, but again, if they're rushing in close range, you have to weigh your pros and cons there. How's that? The other thing that everybody has to consider in choosing a blaster is the price. Not everybody is loaded with money, and so if you wanted to choose your secondary, you have to consider the most bang for your buck. The value is in all the factors that we're talking about, and then how much does it cost? Maybe you're willing to trade some features for lower cost or higher cost. So as far as the lowest cost goes, Dart Zone Mark II is about $80. Um, it is available online, so it's fairly accessible. And $80, you get internal magazine, you get your holster it comes with, and a little orange muzzle. So Springer secondary for about $80, that's what you're looking to run for uh, entry level secondary is about the $100 range. And so if you look at a rainbow, that's more like $60, $70. And so you get a lot of power, a lot of accuracy, for a lower price, um, but you're training maybe some of your liability in not using 3D printed parts. There are some things to consider. With flywheeler secondaries, you definitely run a higher price tag because you have more hardware with the motors and the wheels and the lipo and the magazines. And so in general, flywheel blasters will be a bit higher on the price mark, but you're trading that price for getting a little more rate of fire as well. And so typically you've got something that shoots pretty high rate of fire, you're gonna have to have some additional hardware to make that happen and so the price will go up. The Zinc is $150, um, so you've got 150, about 80. Um, snakes will run you about 100. Um, pigeons or things with more internals will run you upwards of 180. Woozy, over 200. And so, um, unless you're willing to shove out a lot of money for a woozy and you have a way to carry it, um, the Zinc is definitely a better entry level blaster or a mid-tier -mid secondary with maybe a rainbow pistol, a Mark II, or a Snake being more entry level secondary. If you do go with a 3D printed blaster though, you have the option of making it yourself. And so you're trading some of the labor and you're adding value and building it yourself, but you're decreasing the cost of the part. So Zinc hardware kit is about $60, which makes it the cheapest option, and then you can print it and assemble it yourself. If you're able to print and make your own parts, then getting a blaster that you can just buy the hardware and make it yourself will lower your cost. So, that's something to consider as well. Next. The next thing to consider about a blaster is how is the performance? How hard does it hit? If you're shooting close range, you can get away with lower velocity. However, if you're in a big open field, um, you need more power. If you like to rush your opponent, you need less power. If you like more accurate shots, you probably need more power. And so all those things considered, the power in your secondary really depends on how you're going to use it. If you're going to be shooting high rate of fire, semi or full auto, you can probably get away with a little bit less power. So I have a chronograph here and we're gonna shoot a couple of these secondaries through to see what we can get. 170, 75, 75, 60, 62. So this blaster, Fun fact though, I've been sitting on the shelf for quite a while, the handle's loose, we've taken this to a number of events already, so even with the fact that it is many months old and not really maintained, average 170, next will be the zinc. Oops, that was bad.
That was an average of about 130. If you subtract out the shot that hit the side of the chronograph. Next is the Mark II. Okay, so we got a couple of low shots. Back of theirs out, it's probably an average of a little over 100, maybe 115. Last one is the FTW single stage flywheel pigeon. That was actually pretty consistent, no low shots, a high shot of 130, so it's probably an average of, again, 115, 120. The other thing to talk about with secondary is, like Nerf in general, is the cool factor or the aesthetics. You're not just using it maybe to, to win a, an event. Some people may be interested in, in getting a blaster purely for its performance, but there is a large amount of people who may be interested in the cool factor. So you have blasters like the Magpie and the Pigeon where they shoot about 120 FPS, similar performance, but they function differently, which adds a cool factor and changes the aesthetic as well. The Pigeon has a sci-fi kind of real steel look to it. The Mark II has that sci-fi look, um, but along with the aesthetics is the ergonomics as well is the Mark II is not as comfortable. And the Zinc has real steel profile, a little bit of a cool factor with the top prime and how it functions. And it has a really good ergonomics in the grip. So some of your other blasters like the Rainbow are a bit less ergonomic or the Mark II with a more square handle. They're also harder, harder to holster or if you have to draw them out quickly um, to use them, it might be a bit more difficult. That is something to consider as well. And I would say that the Zinc has the best ergonomics and aesthetics that out of the lineup that we have here. This is the Rainbow Pistol. I told you that practice. <laughs> Mark two. That's pretty accurate. This is the zinc. That was even better than Mark II. That was like pretty dang good. That was fun. And the FTW pitcher. I'd say that the Rainbow was the least accurate because I suck. If I didn't suck, the Rainbow would be the most accurate. Then the Zinc, then the Mark II, then the Pigeon. At this distance, you'd probably hit a man sized target well enough. So, there you go. Out of all the secondary blasters we talked about, I would say I'm probably biased, but also the Zinc is newer and cooler, and so the Zinc probably gets my vote for the best secondary because it is. Good price range, good power, good accuracy. You can tinker with it, build it yourself pretty easily, and set it for your play style, higher or lower FPS. It's mag fed, so you can quickly swap out your magazines and you don't have to pick up darts off the field, and it's reliable. And it's sleek in its form factor, so it's more practical to carry and use. So you've got your price, practicality, your ergonomics, your aesthetics, you've got your power, your accuracy, your rate of fire, you've got your slam fire, it's a springer, got power accuracy. It's, it's pretty well rounded. The only thing that could beat it out is in individual categories, but as an all around average blaster, the zinc is definitely the best secondary. 